Hello viewers. Well, this is a little uh, electronic experiment uh, I wanted to do uh, to test the uh, accuracy of the mains or line frequency, the 60 hertz that comes into your house uh, through your wall socket. There's been some talks about uh, that the frequency is never, you know, bang on or exactly accurate and I've always wondered, you know, how my electric clocks, you know, have been able to keep accuracy even though there's been, you know, several claims uh about the the mains frequency shifting uh there's some websites uh on the internet in fact i think it was one actually called mainsfrequency.com uh, and uh, they actually you know can show like slight variations uh in the mains frequency and i'm you know and i'd look at you know those measurements they were taken and you know i've talked to some people over in europe and i know they have electric clocks over there and they've never had any problems with their electric clocks keeping time and so I was just curious, you know, I was seeing, you know, their their measurement devices were showing these, you know, like slight, you know, like, you know, it, it's a real small amount, it's like 10 millihertz, you know, you know, 50 millihertz, you know, it's like, you know, one twentieth of a, you know, hertz. It's not, not much, but you know, in terms of an electric clock, you know, a small frequency change like that, like or 50 millihertz, uh, might not seem like much uh, on paper, but you uh you know translate in that into you know like controlling you know the speed of an electric clock that's about a three second error every hour or about seventy two uh seconds uh, a day uh add that over a month and your clock will be over a half hour off it'd be like about forty minutes off so I was curious as to find out just exactly how accurate uh, the mains frequency uh, well here in America is um you know, over in Europe they have like 50 hertz frequency, but here in uh, in the United States we, uh, or here in North America, we run on uh, 60 hertz. And I was curious about to see, you know, if there was like drifting or shifting that was going on in the frequency. And I built a circuit uh, that had a, you know, an accurate 60 hertz reference to it, but it was a it was a crystal based uh, oscillator, uh, nothing extremely accurate. But you know, I fed the signal into an oscilloscope and I put on a Lichtenstein pattern, and if you know anything about Lichtenstein pattern on a oscilloscope, if two frequencies are matched, uh, the the phase shifting would be what, what we technically call arrested, or it wouldn't move at all. But I was uh, hooking it up, and I was finding that there was some pretty significant shifting there. And I, you know, I also did some frequency measurements, uh, you know, with the frequency counter, and I was showing that you know our mains frequency was hitting. You know, it was it was deviating by as much as 100 uh, millihertz. Uh, there was times in, you know, like you know during the day it would like drop down to like you know 59.9, and you know at nighttime you know I've seen it go as high as like you know darn near you know like 60.1. And I'm thinking like you know if it's deviating that much, you know 100 millihertz. That's you know like I said that if you do the math on that, that's you know about six seconds uh, to an hour of time you know error on the clock and. So anyways, I started this little project and I wanted to uh, actually track and see, okay, how are they getting away with shifting the frequency so much without affecting the accuracy of an electric clock. Uh, because one of the things about electric clocks is it's not really so much that the actual frequency that matters, it's, you know, the actual, you know, seconds, you know, increment on the clock, you know, for every 60 cycles that go by or 50 cycles if you're you know in the European or in the eastern part of the world but anyways the frequency you know if it's 60 Hertz it's basically the clock you know if it's like a, a mechanical electric clock you know it basically is gonna count those cycles you know an in increment a second so anyways my theory behind it is if they're doing these wide or these huge frequency shifts you know how are they keeping the electric clocks from deviating Anyways, uh, so basically what I created was with a circuit here that uh, compares a, you know, a rubidium standard to the mains frequency. And I'll show you what the circuit here uh, does. Um, this right here uh, is a, one of those rubidium standards. You can pick them up for about 50 to 100 bucks on eBay. Um, these produce uh, a couple of signals. You get one pulse per second and you get a 10 megahertz clock out of it. I'm running a 10 megahertz clock into this board here, which is an FPGA. Um, one of the reasons why I'm using FPGA instead of using an Arduino, I was going to just use an Arduino uh, to do this with, but uh, there's a, a mathematical problem I had run into. Uh, one of the things is you can't, 
uh, divide 10 million into 60. Uh, technically, that's dividing a 10 into a third, and if you know your math and try dividing 10s into thirds, you basically get a decimal place that goes to infinity. So, you know, impossible to do. However, there is a trick to getting around that problem. Uh, this FPGA chip has what they call a, a PLL or frequency multiplier in it. So what I'm doing is I'm taking the 10 megahertz clock, uh, I go into the FPGA, and then I multiply the frequency up to 60 megahertz, and then I have a uh, frequency divider, a divide by 1 million that takes the frequency uh, from you know 60 megahertz down to 60 hertz, and and I have it you know on one of the pins here, but I don't have my oscilloscope to show it with at the moment. Um, I move the circuit into my laundry room because I'm planning on running this thing for about a month to you know accumulate some data. So, anyways, what I've got here is I, you know, I have a, a rubidium standard here that produces a, a perfect uh, 60 hertz uh, internal signal, and then over here I have a small transformer. I bring the 120 volts mains coming in, uh, step it down to 12 volts AC, and then here on the breadboard I got a couple of uh, RC uh, low pass filters that gets rid of all the electrical spikes, the high frequency stuff that I don't want, and. And then I just take that signal and then I run it into one of the input pins on the FPGA that just simply turns it into a digital signal. Now, most of these guys over in Europe are using a, uh, they are actually trying to measure the frequency using like frequency counters. I decided to take a little bit of a different approach here since this is really about, you know, how is the power company, you know, able to keep an electric clock, you know, bang on despite the fact that they're, shifting the frequency as wildly as they do and so anyways my theory is is I think the power companies you know they actually count the number of cycles like say over a 24 hour period they count uh, the number of AC uh, cycles that go by and if you do the math uh, for a 24 hour period if you had like a 60 Hertz bang on which actually I have right here because I have the rubidium standard there are supposed to be exactly 5,184,000 counts uh, for a 24-hour period. Um, how do I get that? Uh, it's basically uh, 60 hertz times a second um, and 60 seconds to a minute and, of course, 60 minutes to an hour and then 24 hours to a day. So basically 60 times 60 times 60 times 24 uh, equals 5,184,000. So... Anyways, uh, what I'm doing is I'm taking the mains frequency and then, of course, my rubidium frequency, and I'm running two, uh, basically, uh, pulse or clicker counters in there. Uh, I'm not actually measuring the frequency. I'm just the cycles and incrementing a counter uh, as each cycle goes by. As I said earlier, I have two counters uh, here on the FPGA. Uh, one counts the cycles coming in from the mains, and then the other one's, you know, counting the cycles, which is, you know, the 60 hertz, which I'm deriving from the rubidium standard. Um, give me a second here. Now we move over here, and I'll show you, you know, what I've got going on here on the computer. Um, now I'm updating this uh, every second. Uh, this counter uh, right here shows uh, the number of cycles that have been counted from the, uh, the 60 hertz from the rubidium standard and the internally generate 60 it's disciplined to the rubidium standard uh, this counts the number of cycles coming in from the uh, from the mains and this number here uh, counts the difference between the two counters and I just started filming right here when they're actually uh, colliding with each other um, this if you notice this number here it's around uh, 3 million so this has been running over just a little over 12 hours now uh, once uh, 24 hours has finally reached from the time I started this. This number will be uh, 5,184,000. So anyways, what I'm doing is I'm take, basically taking my internal 60, which is, you know, rubidium, and then I'm comparing it, you know, to the counter from the lines in, and then I'm just counting, you know, when it starts lagging behind. Uh, this number here is the difference, uh, basically this minus this. Um, uh, because this is uh, one, this tells me that the mains is leading uh, my rubidium standard by one cycle. Uh, if it shows a hyphen and it goes negative, then it, it, then it means uh, then the, the mains is lagging behind. 
Now, over the course of the day, uh, that frequency or that number can fluctuate quite wildly. Uh, I've seen it uh, when I just started it here, not even 24 hours ago. I had this thing go down to a, like a negative 600, and then I saw it spike back up to like plus 300. Uh, what I'm doing here is I'm just basically logging this data using a, a serial terminal. I just have a serial connection from the uh, FPGA board, and I'm just uh, logging the serial data. And then eventually, you know, once I get about a month's worth of data, I'm just going to tally it up and you know make some graphs out of it. And I'll show you guys this information, you know, sometime next month when I tally it up, and unless I have some other problems like you know power interruption, which more than likely shouldn't happen. Our power here is pretty reliable, but if uh, there is a power interruption, we'll have to scrap and restart the test again. But, you know, if I can get about a week's worth of data, I might uh, just work with that. But anyways, what I want to do is actually, with this, I'm trying to determine whether or not the power company actually pays attention to this. And, uh, for example, like, you know, some of these guys over in Europe were saying, like, when the power demand is high, uh, the generators, you know, when they're under load, they tend to slow down, so they let the frequency uh, drop a little low, which is kind of what I've been observing, you know, during peak power demands. I can kind of tell that this number will start to go negative as, you know, the generators slow down a bit, but at nighttime, you know, they do speed them up, and when it does, they go a little bit faster, but I'm just curious to see whether or not the power grid actually you know, counts the number of cycles and goes by that, you know, that 5,184,000 count rule, you know, every 24 hours. And so, like, if the generators are running slow and it starts lagging behind in counts uh, at nighttime, you know, when the load or the demand is low, they can speed up the generators and increase the number of counts. And then, you know, it's sort of like if you're falling behind in the race and you go faster, to catch up and the idea is, is do does the power company you know every 24 hours actually try to match up those two numbers and or do they do it every 24 hours or do they kind of just play with it over a week uh, I'm just kind of curious as to see what they're doing so basically I'm just logging the data I'm just capturing a, a number every second and then it's this information here I'm just going to plot out on a graph and actually see you know if the power company is actually doing something to keep the cycle count uh, accurate or not. Anyway, so I'll have some further information, you know, when I get this published, you know, when I get the results published, but for right now I'm just recording the data at the moment. Anyways, hope you enjoyed this video. Catch you guys later. Bye.